No one quite knows where they came from. Some people just say they appeared one day, others say that they have always been there and that the town grew up around them. Officials and newcomers simply pass them by. They're just your average, albeit odd, pizza shop owners and never cause a fuss, never something to worry about. As things of, the na of this nature are wont to be, their shop has become the local soul of the West End. Aromas of O5's cooking fill the daytime air with delectable smells of exotic meat and vegetables from the woods, all embedded in a thick oaken cheesy smell. Those smells, though different and new each day, became familiar and would help set the rhythm of our lives. As the years go by, we learned those smells could tell the seasons of harvest based on the specific variety of flavors present. Maybe the signals of mid-autumn would be heralded with the heavy, creamy flavors of local fungi, or the winter months would be heralded with the bubbling, salty flavors of fish that the sailors would bring in from the sea. It became the rhythm of our little community. Whether one was inclined towards pizza or not, somehow we were all drawn there, and, had, and they had something for everyone. Scrapper would make hearty soups and grog for the early morning sailors, and the good doctor, while O5 would gather ingredients and wood for the day to fuel their great oven. As the day wore on, the regulars would show up and share gossip and conversation. They always drank Scrapper's biofuel, <laughs> strange syrupy concoction, which smells like a campfire on a cold winter's night, but would get you going and ready for the day. By and by, the average community members like myself would stop by, and we were stopped in to pick up breakfast or a beverage of choice and get the day's news before setting off about our day. Then the day would be calm and there would be another burst of activity in the evening as everyone trickled back home and they would serve up O5's massive pizzas as they had been made throughout the day. There was always more than enough to feed everyone. No one ever went hungry while they were there. In the evening, as people are winding down, some would take to relaxing and smoking in their seating area while Scrapper would wash up the day's dishes and O5 would pack up the leftovers. They would take the leftovers all across the city. If you were one of the community, you were looked after. O5 would feed our structural creatures or the sailor ships or the unhoused who were living in the alleys nearby. That was perhaps the most marvelous part of them. None of us ever questioned it, but looking back, it was quite strange, and I never understood how they could manage it. But O5 and Scrapper refused to take payment for anything. If you were one of the community, they wouldn't take your money. We all just accepted that that was the way it was. We all collectively decided that if they were here and look after us, then we would look after them. Since they wouldn't take payment, we would give them gifts in kind. I helped make them some bar stools for those who wanted to sit at their pizza table, because bless O5's heart, but when they made that table, I don't think they were quite able to comprehend that not everyone was a four meter tall behemoth like them and that the stout table would easily reach up to an average person's shoulder or neck level, making us all feel like children in comparison. And so that was the way it was. They would look after us and we would look after them. It was safe there. As one got to know them, they were wonderful people behind O5's imposing metallic armor forged from the carapace of some carnal monster. It was deep a deeply caring being. They would host dan a dance party some evenings where they would teach different forms of dancing. They would demonstrate moves and accommodations with their partner Scrapper, the two of them maneuvering effortlessly and tenderly in melodic rhythms despite O5's imposing stature and Scrapper's mechanical chair. Scrapper once told me that they were recovering their physical energy from one of these dancing sessions that O5 had made them their chair. The two of them completed each other Scrapper would translate from O5's gestures and would remember everyone's face and story, such that they would have orders and everything you need ready for you before you even knew you wanted it. And O5 would handle the physically intensive tasks that Scrapper could not. They were two souls, perfect for each other, truly devoted, and deeply infatuated with each other. We all respected them for that. There were strange things happened around them, and we came to understand that one had few chances for misdemeanors. When rifts in the community appeared, whether it would be someone disparaging of others, or one of our community experiencing a robbery, or in the case of domestic struggles, among other things, either the issue would be resolved unnaturally quickly, and the suspected perpetrator would be very reserved from then on, or these people would disappear and never be heard from again. We came to take it in stride, just as with all the peculiarities. There was an unspoken agreement 
if the coppers ever came around asking about a missing, missing person support, we would give the barest minimum and that all such cases were to turn up dry and go cold. None of us ever asked any questions, and that was just how it was. And all in all, it was a price we were willing to live with. We knew that as long as they were here, we were safe.